So we have x to the negative 1 plus y to the negative 1 divided by x squared minus y squared divided by x times y. Um, anybody remember what x to the negative 1 means? So when you see x to the negative 1, that negative means you take the reciprocal. So if it's x over 1 to the negative 1 power, it becomes 1 over x to the positive 1 power. So long story short, x to the negative 1 is really 1 over x. y to the negative 1 is really 1 over y. So you really have this. In the big numerator, this is the big division bar right here. Um, in the numerator of the big fraction, you really have 1 over x plus 1 over y. And then you have uh, x squared minus y squared divided by xy. So one important skill is to be able to identify the big numerator and big denominator. So the big numerator of the big fraction is this guy. The big denominator is this fraction. Now, either of the two methods that I've presented here for simplifying will work. We're going to use the second method because we just need more practice with that. Okay, so um, look at all the denominators of all the little fractions. What's the LCD? Okay, you need an X, you need a Y, and you need an X times Y. Hey, it's all there, right? So just take X times Y. Okay. So what does that mean? Okay, focus your eyes on the big division bar, which is this one right here, right next to that dot. We're going to multiply numerator and denominator of the big fraction by 1 in the form of x, y, divided by x, y. x times y divided by x times y. So what does that mean? Here's another thing you have to understand. That big division bar, any division bar, is a grouping symbol. So you can put in a set of parentheses here around the big numerator and a set here around the big denominator. It's actually not as important in that one since it is a single fraction, but I'll put it in there anyway because it doesn't hurt. What am I going to multiply this first x, y by? I'm going to multiply it times, I'm going to distribute it here. It's going to, let me use a different color. It's going to land in the numerator right here as a, as a factor. It's going to land in the numerator right here. So what you want to be able to do is get in the habit of not writing down all the details. It, did, it just gets muddy. And do the simplification right now. So I'll, I'll show you what's going on in your head over here. When you, distribute, when you distribute to this guy, what is it? It's 1 over x times x times y. And that's the reason why this guy lands in the numerator, because it's really over 1, and you multiply straight across, and you get x times y over x. But you don't even have to think of it that far if you don't want to. If you want to think of it like that when you do the distribution, that's fine. You can see what the answer should be when it simplifies. What is 1 over x times x over y? Or times x times y, I mean. It's just y. So when you do the distribution here, whoops. When you do the distribution here, you should just end up with y. Is that clear? within that term. I mean, there's more to it, obviously. But. So for, from this distribution from here to here, after the dust settles, you should just end up with y. Is that clear? OK. Now do the distribution to the 1 over y. What's 1 over y times x times y? 1 over y times, this is what's going on in your mind. You can write it down if you want, but do it as scratch work if you do. What's left from that? Just x. So you get y plus x in the big numerator left over. You, you're cleaning it up. You're making it much easier to look at. So in the denominator, do you actually need to distribute? In fact, you don't want to distribute because it's already good to cancel. Look, you multiply big denominator times big denominator, this guy times this guy. But what's the denominator of this guy? It's, it's good to go. The operations, multiplication outside the parentheses, it's good to cancel out right now. And so what do you have that's left? X squared minus Y squared. 
Now, my question to you is, are we done? No. We're not done because... We're not done because this guy, its denominator factors to be something relevant. Okay, it's the difference of two squares, right? What is, what is, what is x squared minus y squared factor to be? x plus y times x minus y. Again, that's the formula. a squared minus b squared equals a plus b times a minus b. So a, uh, what's acting like uh, a is x and what's acting like b is y. Now that numerator can be turned around. y plus x is equal to what? So this numerator is the same as x plus y, isn't it? And the division bars, are, well, let me write that a little better. The division bar is a grouping symbol. So you can put a set of parentheses around that numerator if that helps, you don't have to. And then can you see the, the quantity that's gonna go away? By the way, you could always think of a one out in front of this quantity, can't you? To help you with what's left over. And after you do the cancellation, x plus y divided by x plus y makes one. So what's left in the numerator? One. So you don't wanna forget that one. What's left? One over this one over x minus y. So that's one way to do that problem. There are others, but that's a pretty slick way to do it.